An AMD chip so bad, it got canceled. Some big shakeups happening at Intel and Nvidia releases a feature that, hey, I kind of like this. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. So sit up in case you're lying down, drink some coffee, get ready to talk about something that really, really bums me out because I was actually looking forward to this yesterday, and that was the announcement of the Samsung and AMD collaboration on the Exynos RDNA 2 chip, which, as we talked about in an episode of Hot News last week, was supposed to be announced yesterday, but that announcement never happened and Samsung just stopped talking about it. They deleted the tweet that talked about the announcement and now it's nowhere to be found. And as of recording, I've seen no mention by Samsung what the heck's going on, especially in what's considered to be a big step forward in the industry between AMD and Samsung with them getting back into mobile chips. But there are some other indications out there that it might be the fact that the chip really sucks and they're pulling the plug on it, at least according to different leakers that are out there. So first up, the well-known leaker of Ice Universe posted some tweets with regards to the Exynos 2200, which is the chip we're talking about, but then deleted them with us not, again, having a whole lot of clarity as to why that happened. But in those tweets, it was stipulated that it's the worst flagship processor that's potentially out on the market, falling behind the Mali G710 and MediaTek's Dimensity 9000 chip, as well as falling far behind Apple's A15 or the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1's GPU. And that's when it comes to AMD side of things, the RDNA 2 GPU that's in there. But not only that, it also performed terribly in the CPU side of things, being worse than all of the other flagships that are out on the market. So again, these tweets were made, but then deleted with us not having a whole lot of clarity, just like Samsung announcing that we were supposed to get this chip announcement yesterday, and then it's completely gone. And then to kind of add a little cherry on top of this, there's other leakers out there saying that the Exynos 2200 is gone. All of the next phones that Samsung is going to be making will be featuring a Snapdragon processor, likely the 8 Gen 1, and not the Exynos 2200. And it may be released at a later date, but it's not going to be in the Galaxy S22 series, so it might not be capable of being a flagship chip just yet. This is something that I was tremendously looking forward to. I was actually even thinking of switching to Samsung for the first time in about six years to get one of these Galaxy S22s if it was going to have a really decently performing RDNA 2 GPU in there. And it was a bummer to hear the rumors coming out a couple days ago saying that it was bad, but I ignored that and didn't put it in hot news because there wasn't a whole lot of substantiation to that. But now we're here with Samsung just going dark on all of this, and it might potentially confirm the fact that this RDNA 2 chip is just not very good, which is sad and bothers me, and I wish it was not that way, and it turns out that Samsung is going to be announcing their Galaxy S22 phones on February 8th. So we got an announcement of the next-gen phone announcement, but we didn't get an announcement as to why we didn't get an announcement yesterday when it came to the Exynos 2200, and I'm just sitting here wondering why this really sucks. Are AMD and Samsung having trouble getting this SoC to perform? If so, kind of a big letdown. Let me know what you think of this down below in the comments. But in case you're hyped for their next generation CPUs, AMD confirming that yes, Zen 4 is going to be based on TSMC's five nanometer node in case you're waiting for those next gen things. And Intel's not waiting to shake things up at all, announcing some leadership structure changes that are now happening, probably waiting for their last big hurrah at CES to take place before they changed all of that. They have a new executive vice president, but more uh, relevant to average consumers who might know Gregory Bryant from from being on stage from Intel CES keynotes as well as other ones they've done. He's leaving the company since being with Intel in 1992 and is just getting a better job elsewhere. Or moving on to a new opportunity with the CEO of Intel saying he wants to thank GB for his outstanding leadership and 30 years of service at Intel, which has seen five consecutive years of business growth and most recently the successful launch of the 12th gen Intel Core family. It does seem like that was likely the last big hurrah for him. Intel also grabbing somebody from Micron Technology and appointing them as their new executive vice president and CFO as well. So big changes happening over at Intel. But are there big changes happening in the crypto market? Let's find out. In crypto, stocks Bitcoin up 3% on the day, actually having a green day for once in a while. 42.853 is where Bitcoin's sitting at. Still over $800 billion in market cap. Ethereum up 6.5% to sit at 32.44. Now let's move over to the meme stocks, which yesterday, as far as I'm aware, 
if I'm remembering correctly, was the one year anniversary of the GameStop rally when it uh, started all of this hullabaloo of shorting the stocks and messing with the hedge funds. And it's uh, marking that anniversary by being down roughly 1%. AMC also down 1.5%. But while we're talking about the crypto side of things, let's talk about the Associated Press announcing that they're gonna turn its photojournalism department into an NFT department as well, where you should be able to purchase the NFTs of the Associated Press press images that they've taken over the years. They'll have metadata that comes standard with photos like the location and the equipment specs as well as all of that. They'll be using the Polygon blockchain so it should minimize the effect that it has on the environment. The only issue that I could potentially see with this as least from a consumer side, I'm not 100% sure on this and I would gladly be told that this is not the way it's going to work, but I don't think buying an NFT of this picture gives you copyright rights over that image. You just have a token certifying that you own the tokenized version of the picture, not that you actually own the copyright of the picture. If you own the copyright after purchasing this NFT, I think that actually makes a little bit more sense. And the Associated Press saying that they're going to use this to help fund their operations. I'm actually not terribly against this implementation as long as there's actually some meaningful benefit of the person who buys the NFT to get out of it, such as the copyright rights. That's so hard to say of the image. What do you think of the Associated Press making NFTs? Let me hear from you down below in the comments and I'll let you hear that PCI Express 6.0 has been specified by the PCI SIG organization saying that it's gonna be 64 giga transfers per lane, which is double what PCI Express 5.0 is, and that's double what 4.0 is, and that's double what three, it's it's certified, it's gonna, it'll happen at some point, you know, PCI Express 5.0, which we just got with Intel's 12, it's gonna be, you just, you hold your horses, all right? And in case you were holding your horses for NVIDIA's next GPU launch, you thought it was the RTX 3050 or the 3090 Ti? No, they sneaked one in on you, all right? They just slipped right through. Very sneaky, sir, okay? The RTX 3080 12 gig launching yesterday, NVIDIA putting this out into the open, but very much like the RTX 2060 12 gig, which they kind of announced and never gave an official price for. That's currently where we're sitting with this RTX 3080. It is slightly better than the previous one, with more CUDA cores, more tensor cores, more ray tracing cores, and obviously more VRAM, but having the exact same amount of VRAM that the 3080 Ti has, but there's no pricing. NVIDIA not mentioning price whatsoever, which is just great. EVGA listing their own 3080 12 gig for 1250, which if you're keeping track at home, the 3080, I believe launched for 699. So. Owie wowie, that's a painful one to swallow, but this actually isn't all that painful because it's free. It's a free update to you in case you have an RTX device that has Tensor Cores, NVIDIA announcing their deep learning dynamic super resolution, which is coming out to the GeForce drivers as of the 14th of this month, which is gonna be available for kind of all games, very similar to what's going on with Radeon super resolution, but done in a slightly different way. According to NVIDIA, you enable this deep learning DSR by going to the NVIDIA control panel, turning on DL scaling, which will then give you a rendered higher resolution image, which it will then compress to fit to your screen. So in this instance, a 1620p image will be rendered out as 1080p. However, because it leverages the tensor cores that come with RTX GPUs, you would likely see very little performance dip, if anything at all. So you will get a crisper, clearer image for no performance penalty whatsoever. And they're comparing that to just running DSR at four times, which would essentially be running a 4K image, even though it's only being displayed on a 1080p screen. Fun fact, back when I used to benchmark GPUs at the beginning of the channel, I could only afford a 1080p monitor, but 4K was kind of making its way here. So I used DSR and that was how I got 4K benchmarks. And as far as I'm aware, it's roughly the same as if you had a 4K monitor because it still is rendering out 4K amount of pixels. It's just then only putting out 1080p to your screen. This will allow you to get better looking images for the exact same method. FPS, which is a good thing in my book, NVIDIA saying that it should work essentially in every game because it's not tied to game developers implementing this, but rather it can be based on your settings. So good move by NVIDIA here. Like, yes, or uh, can I like, I, they're doing other shady nonsense, but like, this is good. Also announcing that they're partnering with Reshade to bring out some new things to the GeForce experience. Screen space ray trace global illuminations coming in as well as screen space ambient occlusion and depth of field features, which is a big part of why people use Reshade now will be integrated into the GeForce experience in case you care about that. In case you care about me, this episode of Hot News is over. We're done. I will see you tomorrow for yet another 
breakfast edition of the tech news that's so spicy? Is it hot in temperature or is it hot in Scoville? We'll never know.